Welcome to Instablog's Global Report. This is Sukhmani with fresh updates and more citizen voices from all over the world. Stories for the day are India and Nepal agree to revise the Koshi Treaty. Satellite channels a big hit during the Muslim month of Ramadan. Fragile unity pact signed between Mugabe and Changarai. And young girl commits suicide in India over the Big Bang fear. The government of India and Nepal have shown their willingness to take a fresh look at the 1950 bilateral treaty. The decision to review the treaty follows after both the sides held each other responsible for Koshi floods. CJ Mukunda welcomes the decision taken by the governments. He wants greater responsibility for Nepal to decide upon matters that affect the people within its borders. This is Mukunda, citizen journalist reporting from Nepal on Instablogs.com. Decision by both the countries to review the Koshi Treaty is welcomed, especially after the entirely fertile mode slinging mess that ensued between India and Nepal following the devastating floods in River Koshi. The treaty signed in 1956 gives India the entire responsibility for design, construction, maintenance and repair of the Koshi Barrage, leaving Nepal with little or no role to play in the project within its own territory. Yet India continues to blame Nepal for the annual dialogue, conveniently forgetting the corrupt politician, engineer, contractor nexus within its borders that uh, siphons millions for repair and construction of embankments works that are never done. It is for both the countries to ensure that any revised water agreement between both successfully prevents the reenactment of current tragedy. Satellite television has taken off in Egypt like nowhere else, especially during the Muslim month of Ramadan. 30 days of fasting account for prime time viewing during which the television channels air a variety of entertainment programs for their viewers. CJ Abdul Sami Al Dardir seems extremely happy with the visual feast provided by the ever increasing number of free to air channels during Ramadan. This is Abdul Sami Al Dardir, citizen journalist reporting from Egypt for Instagram blogs. The fasting months of Ramadan reigning profits for broadcasting companies in the Middle East. 30 days of fasting in the months of Ramadan have transformed the long hours of darkness into prime viewing time. The month takes up as much as half the annual production budget of some networks and generates a similar production of advertising revenue. Satellite television has taken off in the region like nowhere else. In wealthy Gulf states, some 95% of household own digital receivers. Even in poorer countries such as Jordan, Morocco, the satellite penetrating rate now tops 75%. Now, not for sure, gone are the days when people were waiting for the sound of cannon shots to break their fasts. It's time to switch over to satellite television. A national unity deal has been signed between Robert Mugabe and Morgan Changarai through South African mediation. It is widely held that by signing the pact, Mr. Mugabe has ceded the power held by him for more than two decades. CJ Mercy Chirima expresses her skepticism about the viability of the pact. This is Mercy Chirima, a little college generator from Zimbabwe for Eastern Gulf. We glance at the fragile national unity pact signed between Mugabe and Shangirai, through South African mediation, points towards a challenging day lying ahead before Zimbabwe. A division of power proposed by the pact between two senators will provide enough opportunity for both the parties to be at loggerheads with each other. The success of the deal requires regular leaders. Presently, Zimbabwe does not have a leadership which is ready to bear its differences over for the good of the country. The whole pact is a sham concept. It allows Mugabe to retain himself in an absolute monarch of the awful misery and despair he inflicted upon the ordinary people. Zimbabwe will need to have the right leadership along, along with a viable economic reconstruction program to build the country out of its current political and economic hardship. 
A young girl in the Indian state of Madhya Pradesh committed suicide after watching TV reports that a physics experiment could bring about the end of the world. It is believed that the girl was traumatized after watching the doomsday predictions on the Indian channels. CJ Radhika criticizes Indian media for its irresponsible airing of programs that generate fear and superstition in the minds of the people. This is Radhika, citizen journalist reporting from India. It exemplifies the new height scaled by the Indian TV channels in terms of showcasing their irresponsibility. Such was the extent of media hype surrounding the experiment that people actually rushed to the temples to perform special prayers fearing the end of the world. This has not happened for the first time. Before this, natural phenomenon such as eclipses have been foolishly and thoughtlessly associated with black magic, blood-sucking vampires and bad omen. Such programming only generates superstitions and fears in the minds of emotionally weak persons. The media should own up its responsibility for causing this untimely death and refrain from airing programs that generate nothing but fear and useless superstition. If you want your voice to be heard by millions, let InstaBlogs be your choice. You can contact us at cj at instablogs.com. That's all for today's show. We'll be back with fresh updates and more citizen voices. Till then, it's goodbye from the entire team of Global Report.